to what you're seeing, like when Comer comes in, it's the same thing. You know, it's a uh, it's click type of politics. It's click politics right now. And why? I mean, it's really hard to split hairs and then try to make the Democrats and Republicans happy. Uh, and, you know, somebody who actually read the Mueller report, I know that's nuts, uh, but somebody who actually did it, um, I need to read the whole her report. But when you try to actually split the middle or you want to you, you want to create a narrative on somebody's age or memory, uh, at that level and then not charge at the same time. I really don't know what they were trying to do. When it's the law, it's either illegal or not. Mm -hmm. Maybe just talk about intent, but it, it's not surprising to me that it's shockingly partisan today. <laughs> his his line, I needed to show my work, Denver. Uh, the question, of course, why would you go there? Why would you even characterize his memory or his physical ability? You're not a doctor. Did he make the case for why? No, I don't think so. And I, I think that's the thing that surprised me a little bit. Almost, um, you know, it would be like me, you know, doing an investigation. I have this new AI company I have now, right? And it's like me doing an investigation. We get to that final point. I'm said, well, we would actually go after this person. But you know what? Actually, they, they meant to steal a Snickers bar, not a zero bar from what we can see and uh, what we talked about. But on the other hand, so since, it, since he stole the wrong thing and he's not really very good at things, we're just not going to charge him. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It's, okay. You know, and I, you either and I, did something wrong or you didn't. Or you didn't. And that's, and that's the same thing with the Mueller report. Either you did something wrong or you didn't. And I think when they're trying to split the baby and it's this political right now, I think it's really a detriment to the American people, and I think it's actually a bit of an insult. Well, of course, doing the business of the American people is what Congress was elected to do. They are literally representatives uh, of each of their districts. So w when we think about the business, they're doing hearings like this. They are potentially going to be voting on a TikTok bill tomorrow uh, that would yeah. see it banned if ByteDance doesn't divest it. And then on the 22nd, they're going to try to fund the rest of the government, the hard parts of the government to fund, including Homeland Security, the Defense Department. Mm -hmm. Is it is their work working? Are you confident that they're going to be able to do those next six appropriations bills when they're also doing things like we're seeing today? Uh, you know, t the short answer is no. I'm not very confident. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for instance, when, when I know some of these representatives actually trying to, I would say, ferret through the TikTok technology, or what it actually means to actually ban TikTok, mm. or looking at other types of things. I don't know if they're behind the door actually talking about what other type of operations look with that type of technology when you talk about information operations or radicalization. I don't even think they have the ability to digest it. I don't think they have the intelligence to do so. I think when you're looking at the other bills, it's become so partisan. And now what do we have, a one or two seat separation, maybe mm -hmm. three seat separation based on who shows up that day? Let me tell you, I think it's going to be a knockdown drag out. And I think you're going to see the screamers and the partisans really coming to play. And I think it's going to be literally insane for a lot of the sane to watch them. I want you to tell us what happened with this TikTok thing, because six months ago, it was quiet. It was crickets. There was this massive effort to block the talk. We're going to ban it. There were four different bills, Democrats and Republicans acting like they liked each other. And then they hired lobbyists and dumped millions of dollars on the district, and the story went away. That in itself is a story, if you ask me. But how did it come back? Well, it's election year. <laughs> so, so, you know, with election year, there's probably some polling going on or things like that, or yeah. they're getting constituent calls, but also you have lobbyists on both sides. I mean, you think about TikTok going away, how does that open up the market for other competitors? Number one, ask number Donald two, Trump. Yeah, ask Donald Meta. Trump. That was Absolutely. the word yesterday. This is about finances. This is about actually pay to play. This is rent seeking, right? So that's mm -hmm. what you're actually looking. Gosh, I'm being very blunt here. I apologize. That's um, why that's we asked. But, uh, but that's that's what's happening right now. The thing when you're talking about TikTok, I despise parts of TikTok based on the fact I was in information warfare. Sure. I sort of do that today, right, with the company that we have when mm -hmm. you're talking about it. And I've told people that information war is the forever war. When you're looking at TikTok, there's other things I would rather do to look at TikTok for data purposes and information rather than totally ban it. I think, again, but that's nuance. Now you're talking about you actually have to have Republicans and Democrats talking to experts in the technical field on the nuance of the specific bill. Mm -hmm. And nuance is not part of this tribalism that's going on today. It's like, you know, how many <laughs> sticks can I bang together and run through the woods and scream, you know, painted in bizarre earth paints? You know, that's really what they're doing. And so that's uh, that's what you're seeing right now is you're seeing a lobbyist, a massive lobby flow coming in that's actually trying to dictate one way or the other where Democrats or Republicans are going to go in the TikTok situation. Hmm. Well, and of course, they in the House will have a chance to vote on this measure tomorrow. That's the working yeah. plan. This goes to the floor on Wednesday. The Senate, though, seems much more in question. And some of what you're hearing from senators who seem more reluctant about this particular legislation are concerns around maybe the First Amendment on constitutionality. Also, the fact that this is a private company specifically being called out mm -hmm. in a piece of legislation. 
Are those concerns warranted? Well, the thing is, if you're banning TikTok, what does that do to Facebook? The mm-hmm. senator, you know, the, the Senate's showing some nuance right now. Mm-hmm. Now you're talking about, OK, what is the cutoff line when you're talking about radicalization and statistics or you're talking about ownership of a said corporation? And what does that actually do for the future of any type of, I would say, any type of controls on this type of language? I mean, that, you know, for me being a First Amendment guy and also understanding that there's really bad things happening in the radicalization space, there has to be nuance where, again, you're not really representing the American people. You're representing special interests based on what your fundraising looks like Mm -hmm. and based on what your polling and crosstabs looks like. And I get it. You want to win your race, but maybe do something and tell the truth to the American people or try to have some nuance in your thinking when you're going for Nuance. That is not a word that no, I don't, I don't even know if they know how to spell here. that. Yeah, you know, that it's like N-E-W-A-N-C-E true. or something. You know, that's how they spell it in Congress. As we spend time with someone who knows, the former Congressman Denver Riggleman is with us here on Balance of Power. Uh, we're going to spend time later today uh, with the president of Poland okay. uh, on the later edition of Balance of Power. Mm-hmm. He's meeting with Speaker Mike Johnson right now. The matter of Ukraine, mm-hmm. of course, is what they're talking about. What does Mike Johnson say to a foreign head of state like this coming with an ask when there is absolutely no answer uh he's dancing on eggshells right now and what he's trying to do is use a lot of big syllable words to say nothing Hmm. that's what's happening behind closed doors right now and you know i wonder mike johnson has got to have uh, i don't want to say this in a a really a come to jesus on what's going on in ukraine and i think uh, i think uh i think poland can help him with that uh there's got to be funding for ukraine Anybody who's outside of that box right now, I think, is in real trouble because if we actually take away funding from Ukraine or that support, Poland's going to be very worried about Russia right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, again, I would love to be in that uh, discussion right now. You know, my background is Eastern European affairs. I deployed there, you know, uh, for uh, Operation Allied Force on the uh, Romanian-Serbian border. I know a little bit about Russia. Uh, just a little, uh, but I would love to be in there right now. But I can't imagine how that conversation is going with Mike Johnson having to appeal to the base of his party in the Freedom Caucus right. and talking, you know, to a representative from Poland at that level. It just it's it, it's got to be a mind numbingly crazy conversation right now. Well, and not just the members of his own conference, but former President Trump as well, who we know has opinions on on Ukraine and whether or not the U.S. should continue to fund the war or just make sure the war comes to an end uh, in whatever capacity. If you were in Poland, if you were part of the Polish government, would you fear a second Trump administration? Should they? Anybody sane should. Yeah. And I, and I would say that the, the head of the Freedom Caucus is in Mar-a-Lago, by the way. So, uh, I mean, that's really what we got. And I would say that the speaker actually go to Mar-a-Lago before he actually makes any decision going forward because President Trump is the nominee for the uh, presidential race in 2024 and could possibly win. So, yeah, I think, um, I think what you're seeing right now um, – I would think that anybody who's sane in the Polish government is like, for the, for the love of God, we hope that Trump doesn't win.